I call the meeting of the Urbana Historic Preservation Commission to order and the time is 7.01 p.m. and we are operating remotely in all cases except our person representative is David Hayes. Thank you, David. Welcome. Um, all right, Marcus, do you want to do roll call, please? Yes. Let me bring that up. Is that my dog that'll be online now? That's okay. Of course it is. <laughs> Let's see, HPC, okay. Uh, David Hayes. Present, here. Alice Novak. Here. Gina Pagliuso. Here. Renee Pollock. Here. Trent Shepard. Here. And Kim Smith. Here. Thank you. Um, we have a quorum. Uh, next item is changes to the agenda, which we don't have. So the next item to vote on is approval of the minutes of our last meeting, May 6th, 2020. Yikes. <laughs> Are there any additional uh, corrections? I've read through those and I found yeah. nothing in error. And I, oh, Gina, she's got an idea. Uh, I think that when we, um, in the reporting of the votes, for May 6th, Alice, I think you abstained from, I did. Voting, on, from voting on the windows, but the, the minutes say that you voted yes. No, thank you for catching that. I didn't even catch it. I don't remember it. I actually went back and I looked at looked the- at uh, I looked at that earlier today. All right, so- yeah, I went back and looked at the video just to make sure I wasn't misremembering. <laughs> oh, I, I remember too. Marcus, are you taking minutes? All right. Um, Kat is taking notes, but I have marked down here that um, in reporting of the votes on May 6th, Alice abstained from the uh, window replacement vote. Okay. She did not vote yes. So we can All right, thank you. Um, Trent, yes, you were going to go in and say something else? Well, I. I uh, read through them and I didn't notice that, but uh, they look fine to me. So I would move that we approve the minutes as amended. Second. Um, Gina, did you have something you wanted? Oh, that was, we added that. Anybody else discussion at all? All said, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Second. All right, thank you. Who made the second? Uh, Gina? No, no I Renee. Did. Renee. Renee. I did. Thank you. Taking notes. Thank you. Um, all right. As far as I know, we don't have any written communications or audience participation. This would be audience participation, if anybody's there, that does not directly relate to the um, changing of the windows on the subject property that we'll be talking about. Anybody in that category? We do have someone calling in and uh, just in case they're not aware, if you press star nine, that will raise your hand caller on the phone if you do want to uh, participate in audience participation. Otherwise, I don't, oh, they have raised their hand, so we'll uh, allow them to talk here in just a minute. Yeah, and, and now uh, you're allowed to talk, so then you can press star six to unmute caller and you can address the commission. And if you can, can go ahead and introduce it. Yeah, we can hear you. If you'd like to go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, um, this is Chris Inc. Um, just, I was just calling about 801 West Oregon, um, the Royer House. Um, I know there was, uh, we thought that was gonna be on the agenda tonight, but um, it didn't need to be for this particular case, it sounded like. But um, I uh, were the owners of that property and um, I just wanted to call in uh, because um, we took over management of it recently too, because there really wasn't um, very good management before. So uh, we're excited to be tackling some of the deferred maintenance of the house and try and improve the exterior appearance. Um, so I'm sure we'll be talking to the commission more in the future as far as getting, um, uh, and, and staff as far as getting approval for uh, some exterior work and things like that, but we're excited to be kind of 
um, making that, improving the, the appearance of the property because it's such a cool house. So that's why I just wanted to call in to say that. Great, thank you. And Anybody thanks else? for your enthusiasm and yeah. getting involved in that, Chris. Oh, no problem. Thank you all. Uh, anybody have anything they want to ask Chris or we're good to go? Thank you, Chris. Very thoughtful of you. Okay. Like... Thank you. Um, okay. um, any other audience participation then, attendees? Okay, I think we're set. I'm not good at this one. Um, <clears throat> all right, next uh, next item we have our new public hearings. Uh, I hereby open public hearing number uh, HP-2020-COA-07, a request by Joan Price for a certificate of appropriateness at 806 West Main Street to replace a broken second story window uh, front it should be casement window with a double hung window. Um, Marcus, staff report, please. Pat will be presenting this case. She's uh, cross training. Hi, everyone. My name is Kat Trotter. Uh, I'm a planner one. I was hired um, last June. So this is my first HPC case. I'll get going. So this is, re is a request by Joan Price for a certificate of appropriateness to replace a broken second story front casement window with a double hung window at 806 West Main Street. Uh, based on the analysis of this uh, COA criteria, staff recommends that the HPC grant the certificate of appropriateness. This is a location map. The property is in the West Main, um, West Main Street Historic District on the north side of Main Street facing south. Uh, the home was constructed in 1900 in the Queen Anne style. The Urbana Zoning Ordinance requires a C of A for any alteration that affects the exterior architectural appearance of locally designated landmarks and buildings in the local landmark district. Uh, this is just the front face of the house. <clears throat> The COA would permit uh, the replacement of an existing second story front casement window with a double hung window. The window is broken and needs to re be replaced and it is not an original window. It was installed in the 1980s. The proposed replacement qualifies as a major work and requires HPC approval. Uh, this is a photo of the window from the interior. The existing casement window is on the front of the house on the second story. The replacement window would be a Pella Reserve traditional non-standard size double hung window. Uh, it would be 55 and a half inches tall by 39 and a half inches wide and would match the style of the other double hung windows on the second story. These are the other double hung windows. Uh, no changes would be made to the exterior of the building or to the original house itself. One non-original non casement window would be replaced with a double hung window that would match the other second story windows. Uh, the double hung window would be the same size as the existing casement window and the exterior framing would remain the same. This is a photo from the Pella Reserve um, pamphlet. It's a double hung window. It's actually three double hung windows. Um, to summarize, staff found that this proposal meets the requirements for a COA. The window will be replaced um, is not original to the building and all of the original qualities and character of the building will be maintained. The proposal will not change the historic character of the property and no site features, spaces, or spatial relationships will be altered and no chemical or physical treatments or new construction are proposed. Uh, the Historic Preservation Commission has the following options. Grant the requested certificate, certificate of appropriateness, grant the requested certificate of appropriateness subject to certain conditions, or deny the certificate of appropriateness. Uh, staff recommends approval of the cer certificate of appropriateness to allow the window to be replaced um, with model C, or with the model as detailed in exhibit C, and the applicant has tuned in remotely to answer any questions you may have. And I can take any questions you have for staff as well. Um, Kat, I had a question. Sure. Um, it's really two casement windows that are being replaced with one casement window. Is that right? No. 
No, it's two double hung windows. It's one casement window being replaced with one double hung window. One double casement window. Yes. One. A set of casement windows being replaced with one double hung. Yeah. So, and it looked like they didn't have access to that front porch the way things are anyway, right? Yes, and Joan could speak to this a little bit better, but um, they had debated installing a door that would allow them to walk out onto that front porch um, and decided against it because of financial reasons. Um, so the double hung window makes the most uh, financial sense. I actually got, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, I actually got a certificate of approval from you all a number of years ago to do that. Um, it just was a much more expensive proposition than I realized. Um, but I still was stuck with the window that didn't work. No, so I, when I had Pella come out, this was one of his suggestions and it seemed the most economically feasible for me. Since then, I have found somebody, you need to make a list of people who repair windows because they are really, really hard to find, mm -hmm. but who thinks he can repair it. So I, I write, at this point, I'm going to pursue letting it be repaired, which will of course not change the exterior at all. He thinks he can fix the, the frame, it just needs a lot of work and the glass will be replaced. So I don't know if I need approval. I don't think I need approval for that. Cause it's something it's just fixing it. I'd replace the glass, but I still would like to get the certificate of approval just in case he can't fix it. So then I would have to replace it at that point. Okay. Um, I, we got a, out of order a little bit. Are there any other questions from, um, of CAS by any of the commissioners? And okay, so then um, Joan, did you want to say anything more in general? You gave a good summary already, so. No, I've been going back and forth with this window for years trying to figure out how to fix it. So, I mean, I'm just going to try to repair it, but I may need to replace it. So I just wanted to get your, I knew I had to have your approval before I could do that. Um, any questions of Joan? No. I've got a, a thought that I kind of think it'd look better if it were replaced with a double hung window so they'd match the, the three windows on the other well, side. I, I, yeah, I, you know, years but, ago when I came before you all, I, I had pictures and everything and you gave me permission to replace it. I think it was a door at one time. Mm -hmm. um, that I would went guess. Up the yeah. yeah, the house what Mary Lee McDonald redid this home like in the 1980s. And I know just with repairing it and doing things here myself, sometimes you can't fix something. I mean, it requires so much work that it's not often possible to make, you sometimes have to just make changes. So I think that's what she did up there. I have a feeling it was so damaged and there was probably a lot of things. So she replaced it with the casement window. Um, I imagine she did it. I don't think there's been any major work, you know, except for me done since then. But um, yeah. Uh, that I can. I thought a casement window would look. I mean, the um, double hung would be more appropriate to the rest of the house. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it is definitely. I just um, held a tape measure earlier tonight at um, up to 39 inches, and it's really, really wide. Yes. Uh, compared to what the other windows are, but um, yes. Yes. You know, either here, no there, nor there. If you're willing. I, I think it was a door at one time, but it's a very. It would have been a very narrow door, at least how it's been rebuilt. I had a lot of trouble finding somebody who could even get me an appropriate door that, that would work for that size in the space. It, you all have done enough historic repair. You know how complicated it can be sometimes. Right. You're trying to change something, you're trying to keep it the same, but you sometimes need to do improvements. Yeah. Um, any other questions or comments for Joan? Dina? Yeah, I had a couple just uh, based on the fact if the window does get changed to the pellet, okay. um, there were a couple of things. The window um, detail proposal that we got says that the exterior color would be a primed aluminum and then that the half screen would be Hartford green. So is, oh, I don't it, know. Huh? I don't know about that. I think they sent you, they sent that information. I told them I needed one that you would approve. So, right. Um, uh, and they told me the exterior, what they did tell me was I, I told them the exterior needed to not change. And they were, I, from my understanding, we're going to make sure that it looked the same as it does now. Uh huh. The wood trim on the outside will not change. 
I think the primed aluminum would probably match the storms that are on your other okay, so windows. Okay, so he probably picked the colors just knowing right. that. Um, I guess I'll the biggest thing I'll check. The biggest thing for me was under the performance information, it says that egress does not meet typical United States egress. And I don't know if that's a bedroom and if that's something that no. we need to worry about. No, it's not. It's um, actually a loft up there. And that goes off a loft area. It's a fairly large area, but it is not. It is open to the staircase. And then the hallway goes down the hall from it. So it's a big open area. Um, I mean, I could send you a picture of it, but it is not a bedroom. And you really couldn't use it as a bedroom. There's no door. You know, it's open to the lower level. It's a loft. Right. OK. I guess those were my only questions. Thanks. OK. Is there uh, anybody else from the um, audience? Or do we have an audience? <laughs> David, who's in there with you? It's like just Joan. There's, there's no one in the, the building itself, hence I'm unmasked. Oh, oh OK. <laughs> That's true. I'm all on my own. All right. Any other questions from commissioners? If not, I would entertain a motion. I'm, um, I'll move to approve. Do we have a second? I second it. I'll second. Seconded by Kim Smith, motion by David. Any other thoughts? Anybody wants to share? All right. Oh, yes, Marcus. Um, just regarding the potential ability to repair the existing yeah. window, I think technically repairs uh, would be considered a, a minor work. That's what I thought from reading the guidelines you sent me, um, but it just but it, came up suddenly. I just find somebody finally said, you know, I know somebody who might be able to do this. And he literally just came over last week. So I wanted to pursue this just so I'm going to have to do something one way or the other. Just so I knew what my options were. Convenient for staff if the, the motion was worded as either to you know, replace with the you know, provided exhibit or to repair like with like. That way we're covered. All right. Anybody want to make an amendment to that motion or withdraw the motion and start all over again? Can I ask a question? That's that's simply because of a sense. David, you want to amend it? That'd probably be the. Well, I just actually, I just have a question about that. So is the idea that we're, we're can you hear me all right? Because I can almost hear an echo here. OK. Um, it's the idea to add this in just in case, in fact, making that kind of repair is considered major, not minor, because we're uncertain about how it'd be classified. I mean, I'm just, I'm just wondering, like, like we did, we're not, in other words, we're not sure whether or not making that kind of repair would be considered major or minor. Therefore, we're making this amendment. Yes, Marcus, comments. Um, re Pairing the existing window with new glass would be a like with like replacement that would definitely be a minor work that can be administratively reviewed and approved by the HPC chair and the zoning administrator. Um, but she might I, also replace the window, so. Right, so the replacing of the window with a double hung would definitely be a major work. Yeah. So what I'm asking as staff is um, <coughs> if you don't say she can either replace it or repair it as an HPC directive, then I need to do the paperwork with Alice and Kevin separately. Got it. Okay. I think cover if, the minor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so the motion, uh, we didn't really have a detail in the motion anyway, did we? So shall I, I'll withdraw, I'll withdraw the original motion so that we can amend. And now, okay. I, will, now I will amend it. I will advance it again with the pro amendment proposed by Marcus that, um, that it specify either replacement or repair. Um, Second. Okay. 
Um, Marcus, is that clear enough? Yes, that is fabulous. Who was the second by? Kim Smith. Thank you. Dina, did you have a question or? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? All right. So now we're voting on the the revised amendment, so that Joan can get either either thing that works for her. That'd be great. All right, Marcus. Do you want to do roll call vote since it's a yes, CPA? Um, let's see. David Hayes. Yes, I approve. Alice Novak. Yes. Dina Paliuso? Yes. Uh, Renee Pollock? Yes. Brent Shepard? Yes. And Kim Smith? Yes. All right, motion approves unanimously. Um, any other questions or comments? If not, I'm gonna uh, close. Yep. I've got a little comment that's worthless kind of, but Joan, I had, it might even be the same brand. Those windows look very familiar to me that were fogged up just like that. And yeah. I was so glad to finally get them replaced when I did. It's really so annoying. You can't, they, they always look dirty, yeah. They sure do. <laughs> That's where they have to be. They have, the glass has to be replaced. But my yep. guy doing it thinks he can repair the mechanism on the crank. And then the window's a little swollen, but he can do the carpentry work for that. So hopefully that will, that will happen. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Hope it works out for you. Thank you so much. Thank all. Thanks all of you. Thank uh, you. I am now going to close public hearing. Oh. oh. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm now close public hearing HP-2020-COA-07. Thank you very much. And um, happy window shopping. Thank you. 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 Monitoring of historic properties. Next thing is staff report, which we have from Marcus. Okay, um, I did, uh, I checked with Kevin and I guess we don't normally send this out as a staff report or anything like that. Um, but I, I emailed this out before, shortly before the meeting. Yep. But I will, uh, can everybody see my screen okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, so, you know, you folks see the major works that come through, um, but you don't, you know, necessarily see the minor works. Um, and typically it's kind of quiet around here, but this last year was a real banner year with people working on their homes. Um, so I wanted to, to touch base with you all and let you know um, those things that did come through and kind of touch base on the things that we need to do some follow up on. Um, starting off, you know, back in 2019, Andrew Fell had come in with a renovation request for to Buena Vista Court, um, which he's renovating into a rental property. Uh, that had turned into a, a the first one was for replacing the main roof and replacing and repairing the interior framing to support that roof. Uh, that was a minor work that was approved. And uh, that work is currently um, completed. It was done prior to last winter so that it could be, um, you know, stable through the winter. Uh, and the second part of that request was to repair the exterior plaster. Uh, that also was a minor work that was approved administratively. That work is currently on hold pending completion of the entire regut um, and renovation of the interior. Um, Andrew actually notified us about a week ago that he's getting really close to uh, having it ready for inspection by the city. Um, and then the third piece of that um, certificate of appropriateness was to replace the exterior windows. Uh, as we all know, exterior window replacement is a major work. Um, that was approved with conditions by HPC last January. Most of those windows have been replaced. Uh, the trim out and everything is still in progress because of the, the renovations that are still going on. Um, and as you probably remember, 
because it was approved with conditions, not all of the windows were approved. Andrew took that to the economic hardship um, status uh, process so that he could make the economic argument that it made more sense to repair, replace those windows rather than repair all of them. Um, and that, with that additional um, information and argument, that economic hardship certificate was approved in, let's see, uh, last May. That work is almost finished. Uh, also at the end of 2019, um, Eric and Naomi Jacobson had requested a major work to add a sunroom on to their property at 803 West Main. Uh, that, um, that work is completed. Uh, that went through pretty easily. Um, moving on into 2020, there, this was kind of a banner year for Buena Vista Court. Henry Stralo submitted a, a minor work application to restore his original windows. Um, that was approved administratively. That work's been completed. They look pretty good. They, they look original, but they look in, in good condition. But as I understand it, Henry, you know, did most of that work on his own. So which, that isn't Marcus, a skill set that everybody has. Yes. Which, which one of the uh, buildings there at uh, Buena Vista is uh, Stralos? What, what? Uh, is it, how far back is he? on Elm Street. He okay. is right on Elm Street. It's number so, right. so number he's, one it, and number eight yeah. are on is he Elm front, Street. And front kind of west and, in a U. What, what is he fronts number, west, yes. He's, he's the west one and number two is the east one? No, the other way? No, the east no. one is number eight on Elm. Oh. Right. He, so it's yeah. one through eight, like a semicircle or a uh, horseshoe. Okay, all right. I think it is. You're right. Gina. Yes. No, you're correct. Okay. Yeah. I think Thanks. like the front door might be on the west side or on the south side facing west. Okay. Um, and then Janet Moore in number four Buena Vista Court uh, recently took um, uh, possession of number four, which is the northwest most bungalow. It's on the I think that's Springfield, Springfield. side. Yeah. Um, and she uh, submitted actually four certificate of appropriate applications to repair the exterior stucco, to add on a porch railing. Um, one of the residents there uh, has mobility issues, so she wanted that safety and repairing the porch roof and repairing the porch framing itself. Um, on both of these cases, we made sure to work with the applicants to ensure that the um, unique patterns in the stucco would be replicated. Um, and we took pictures to uh, document that that was being done. But we wanted to make sure that the, the craftspeople knew that they weren't going to be allowed to just put on a flat coat on these. Um, the exterior stucco repair at Janet's is completed except for the final paint because uh, the, the priming and the curing of the stucco were to be uh, cured over the winter before they finish off the exterior paint coat. Um, the porch railing looks really good. Uh, it, almost kind of matches the, the ironwork railings. Uh, that took a little bit of back and forth when Menards didn't have the original design that she wanted and she checked back in with us and we helped her, her find a, a new design. Um, the porch framing was done really nicely. Uh, they replaced the interior ceiling with a, a, um, a wooden beadboard version rather than I think the plaster that was there that is not visible from the outside. So we treated that as an interior repair, but it looks really sharp. Um, and then uh, she still has the final porch roof repair exterior is waiting on the exterior stucco to be finished. 
Moving back over to eight Buena Vista Court, Henry Stralo, I think after seeing the work that um, Andrew Fell and Janet was doing on their stucco, he submitted a minor work application for his exterior stucco repair. And that was um, reviewed and approved administratively in November. That works in progress. Um, I think the, the building paper's on and some of the stucco has been replaced. Um, and then, you know, getting in to recent activity today, uh, case number seven, uh, you heard Joan Price with her request for an exterior window replacement. Um, recently in uh, last fall and early winter, Chris Ank had uh, started repair work there at 801 West Oregon Street. Um, he didn't really realize that even kind of minor exterior concrete repair on the porches and walls required a certificate of appropriateness. Um, and we spoke about that in the summertime um, and we worked through the paperwork process. Um, and so those applications were approved in November. Uh, that work completed. Uh, that was done by Greg Hargis here locally. They really did a fabulous job. Um, it was a two-part project. Uh, one of them was exterior repairs to the stucco and the concrete and the walls. And then the second project was a pergola roof repair. Uh, the, the eastern porch had exterior trusses kind of making it look like an open pergola. Um, and sometime we think in the 60s or early 70s, the owner had put on uh, fiberglass corrugated sheeting, which was actually there when the property got reviewed and approved for landmark status. Um, so it made it a little complicated. Um, Chris Ank wanted to take the fiberglass sheeting off. And uh, we determined, you know, administratively that if he had wanted to take off the fiberglass as well as the trusses to make it a completely open porch, that would have been considered a major work and would have had to come to HPC. Um, but because the fiberglass um, had been an added element uh, and he was simply removing that uh, additional element and repairing the pergola that that would be considered a minor work. Um, and that works completed. I've got some photos of that that I can try to share. Um, moving on to the work performed without certificates of appropriateness. Some of this you're familiar with, some of it is kind of new. Um, the 1404 South Lincoln Avenue is the Zeta Tau Alpha Sorority House, which is now Chateau Normand. Pierre Moulin had installed some, what we call development signs, where it advertises the property, directing people how to rent it. Um, that is within the zoning ordinance code, the sign chapter of the code, but it does not fit in with the historic preservation ordinance, which requires you to seek a certificate of appropriateness before you add on signs. Um, so he had been, we had spoken with him back in February, let him know he needed to submit a certificate of appropriateness and install compliant signs. Um, just because of, you know, the COVID situation, this particular issue fell low on my priority list of items. Um, and now that things are winding down with other projects, um, I can contact him again and let him know that he needs to submit that certificate of appropriateness and give him a reasonable amount of time to do that, um, after which he will need to remove those signs and still 
apply for the certificate of appropriateness if he wants some level of signage. Um, but he just, I don't feel he can, he should be able to continue having those non-approved signs. Uh, the other uh, situation that we became aware of last winter was that uh, Jonah Weisskopf had installed railings on the stairwells, stairways at the Freeman House and Bill's House um, to comply with insurance requirements as those are rental properties. And even if they weren't rental properties, uh, the, the building code requires uh, stair railings for stairways more than three steps. Um, I will remind him that he needs to submit an application for certificates of appropriateness to install historically compatible stair or porch railings. Um, and that'll be interesting because he needs to be able to, you know, submit a, an acceptable um, design. And that will be a major work. Um, and I believe the, the signs will also be an HPC major work. So those will be coming to you as certificates of appropriateness. Um, finally, the new one that came to our notice this past summer was that the new owners at uh, the Ricker House at 612 West Green Street had replaced the asphalt roof on the house without requesting a certificate of appropriateness. Um, because they replaced like with like, this would be a minor work and can be handled administratively. Um, I spoke with them in November after I was notified about this. They said that they would submit the, the C of A application, and that is on my list of uh, people you, to provide Marcus, that. Marcus, yes. do you know when they purchased the house or when they moved in? I do not. I think it, I want to say it was midsummer or in the spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we also, uh, PAC holds an easement um, on that particular property as well, too. Oh, okay. That's and to my know. knowledge, nothing was initi initiated as a result of that. So anyway, thank you for making this great nifty list that you made. And Alice, did, yeah. does that pack a uh, covenant, did it have a 20 year life to it? No, um, the only one that did has expired now, Trent, you have a good memory. Um, the Brighton's house on Green Street. Okay. Um, that had the carriage barn. Um, right. That had a limited time uh, easement on it for the Brightons. So, Alice, is this a, essentially a, a um, perpetual conservation easement that requires monitoring by PACA and approval yes. for stuff? Yes, it, it does. And, and PACA needs to do a little bit of work on um, how this works when there's an alteration to the property or proposed alteration to the property. Okay. So. Well, uh, I would be glad. I think it only makes sense for us to work collaboratively so that if I happen to have a list of their properties and I happen to be out driving around and I see something amiss, I can let them know and maybe they would be willing to do the same as well, or at least on the ones that we have in common like this one. Um, and who's they? You're just generally property? Uh, Oh, oh. The pack of yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's get together and, and chat okay. about this. I would love to have, have something better happen on, on both sides of things on this, on how it works. Okay. Um, so this, you know, all of this fabulous work, yes, is a lot of work for staff, but I really think it's a great, um, opens up a great opportunity maybe for a tour of it seems to make sense Buena Vista Court later in the summer when all this work is complete. Um, be nice if COVID was gone and we could do an actual walking tour or perhaps it could be simply a virtual tour with pictures posted. Um, these, these folks I think really deserve a lot of, of credit and appreciation from the city for for keeping these properties um, trying to improve them and keep them in 
intact condition. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, does anybody have any comments or questions or concerns about stuff? Trent? This? And Jean has been, had her hand up for a bit. Uh, okay, sorry, I don't have the photo of it. Gina. That's okay. Um, so I think that the, I, I noticed the Ricker House roof uh, getting replaced. I think it was after that hailstorm when everybody else was having their roofs replaced. Um, so I, you know, I think that was probably part of the deal was everybody else was getting their roofs replaced. So um, I think that's what it was. Sure. I didn't, I didn't speak to the owners, but I happened to notice it going on. And then um, Marcus in your report, 504 and 508 West Elm are the Freeman House and the Sutton House, not Bill's House. Sutton House, thank you. Bill's yeah. House is a little bit further west on Elm. I appreciate that. Sure, thanks. Gina, what were the addresses again that you had? Five. 504, actually it shouldn't be, shouldn't it be 504 and 506? Yes, it should. Right, so that's not correct in the report either, Marcus. Because 508 is that contemporary apartment building that right. Set back. Yeah. Way out. Right. Okay, so that's really interesting because our zoning map, I, I'm glad I made a fool out of myself on camera because our zoning map under historic landmarks and districts lists 508 West Elm Street, the Bill's house. Yeah, that is Bill's house. It's further west. That's that on. That was our first landmark, I think, or one okay. of them. First. Yeah. And is 506? West Elm. That's the Freeman House. Uh, so it must be 502 and 50. Oh no no no! Wait a minute. Hang on. Two. 502 Sutton just, House. 506 is the is the apartment building. I mean, I just found a photograph that says 506 West Elm on it. All right. So then it should be the Sutton two, House. Two four and eight. Yes. Yeah. Two four and eight. So 502 and 504. So two is Sutton, right? 502 is Sutton, 504 is Freeman. Okay, all right, thank you very much. So I'm and glad our, uh, our zoning map is not incorrect. Um, Trent, did you have a comment? Yeah, but when we, I don't know that we've ever, or maybe we have and I've just forgotten, but gone through all these the minor uh, administrative approvals on things. Um, I, I liked getting updated on that. Yeah, I don't um, think we have done it before. It's a Marcus Ritchie invention. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder, it, it, you know, like either, maybe the thing to do, maybe this is more work, but maybe it'd be less. If every time that happened, we just, you know, the whole commission got a, an email and said, here's what happened. And then you'd never have to, if, if you do think you want to catch up once in a while, once a year or whatever to, to do this, you wouldn't have to. Sure. I think it might be nice to know what's going on as it's happening, but Absolutely. that's just my well, feeling. I, a lot of this happened since our last staff meeting, since our last HPC meeting, um, which I think was May. So a lot of these were happening in November and stuff. Yeah. Um, or happened right after that in May HPC meeting. Um, but I could also certainly send an email to the HPC when a minor, you know, a, a certificate of appropriateness has been reviewed and approved. So at least you could know um, that it has been processed. Um, also, on the other hand, if you would like to know when one has been applied for, so that you can go around and take a look at it for yourself before staff and the HPC chair review and approve it. That would be understandable and reasonable as well. So if you all want to say, let us know as early as possible, or just let us know when one is approved or denied, I'll go either way. I don't want to make more work for you because I know you've got plenty of work already, but I Anyway. Well, maybe, you know, if, if there's an email and there's a notification through email that way, if, if you guys want to drive by it, you can drive by. If not, not. It isn't, it isn't that much trouble at all. Um, 
And, uh, you know, we get unlimited mail through our wonderful uh, IT plan, so we don't have to pay for all of them. Okay, I will send out uh, notices to HPC upon COA application. Okay. Are, are the, the rest of you, do you feel like it? Like, oh, I don't want to see all that stuff. It's just more email to look at, or would you like to know? I think it would be good to see it in real time because that might eliminate the need for, you know, putting it all into one big pile at the end. You know, I mean, at, you know, in a meeting, for example. The only thing is, I'm not sure what happened to um, our CLG things, but it used to be that we had to turn in like an annual report to the state. And so your list, still. your list would be really nifty to just have it and, and stick it in the report. Well, and, you know, frankly, I might just keep this as a running list. So yeah. when, you know, I'll be doing it both anyways. Um, I like this. There's a lot of information that gets distilled down into two pages. And then when I get the ones that were performed without certificates of appropriateness fixed, then I can just adjust it here on the sheet. I, I think it's a terrific idea. I mean, it's part of our job and our joy to be attentive to what's happening and, and, and as it's happening. And otherwise, you know, we get together for meetings and it seems episodic. So yeah. I'm all for yeah. it. Yeah, and if, there was, and if there was an issue that came up as you were making your observation, then we, and it became important enough, then you could just add it to the meeting as opposed to, you know, how would, how would I describe it? Having to do it all in one big lump. In other words, if something really sticks out, you bring it to your attention and say, hey, wait a minute, maybe we should do something about this, if that makes any sense. It does. And, and I really appreciate the, the insight and the memories that you all have. So if I get an application, I'm just going to be you know, looking in files and looking at photos and digging around in my files. Whereas, you know, Renee might know something about the property or Trent might be like, yeah, you know, I saw them working on that last year or the yeah. same thing happened elsewhere. So I, that really is one of the great uh, benefits of the it, commission itself. It, it's a collect, the collective memory issue is a big deal because I, you know, I still, especially since uh, COVID happened, I, I drive around Urbana all the time, still yes. looking out the window at, at what's going on in the neighborhoods because it's like, it's like, you know, that's part of my world for, you know, what, a long time and it doesn't just go away, you know? So, I mean, I think that that might be, you know, if it's not too much extra work for you, let's put it that way. It, it isn't, it, it's very easy for when uh, an application gets you know, complete application gets received um, that we forward it on. Um, I think actually, you know, for our other types of cases, plan commission and zoning board of appeals, when the legal ads for those cases go out, those notices get copied to the ZBA and plan commission members so that they know that there's going to be a case coming up. So yeah. even though you folks don't have to hear and decide on these cases, they still are, you know, the purview of the HPC. So it's not a problem at all. Well, thanks. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. Uh, all right, next item we have um, study session. Mark is sneaking a study session in on us. Yes, I am. Um, so, and this kind of has grown and I'll share the screen again and turn off my video. Um, this grew out of my concern when I started getting all of these notices about people doing stuff, not necessarily with submitting the proper documentation. Um, I, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt and think, well, maybe they just didn't know either that it was a historic property, especially if they are a renter. And I'll, several of these properties are rental properties, even though they're fabulously historic properties. Um, but it's also maybe that they knew it was historic, but didn't really realize there was an ordinance or that that ordinance meant that 
they were being regulated. So I, I'm kind of proposing a three-step owner education program. Uh, step one is we create or update a welcome to the historic preservation program brochure that just kind of details what the program is. I'm sure there's that we've got something like that now, but it probably really needs updated. Yeah. Um, let them know what the historic preservation ordinance covers, what they have to do to stay in compliance with it, um, and what they don't have to stay in compliance with. You want to paint your, the inside of your house pink and and rip all the the doors and windows out inside? Fine. It you it's the reg exterior that's regulated, but also send it with a welcome letter saying, hey, we're really excited to have you living in Urbana and taking care of one of these wonderful properties. And um, we're here to help you do that. So that is that would that would get sent out to everybody, even if they've owned the house for 40 years, because it kind of sets a base point of everybody is now educated and you can't, you know, say, oh, I didn't know. Um, and we would make sure that it not only went to the owner of the property, but also to the residents of the property. It's real easy to, to send the letter to the house itself. Uh, step two is to track ownership of, those of our historic properties. You can easily check that on the recorder's website or even just through the CCGIS map online. And if we find that ownership's changed, we send that welcome letter and brochure to those folks. Um, and maybe if we wanted to go so far as to, you know, getting their phone number or email address and calling them up and being, you know, personable about it. Um, and step three is kind of the reminder function, create a holiday card or even just a postcard, you know, with a cool historic house on it. And again, thanking them for their participation in the program. This would be that cheap, easy annual reminder of, hey, don't forget, you're in a historic property, you're thinking about adding on that sunroom next year, or, you know, putting on a new roof. Hey, even if you're just replacing that roof, you still need to get a certificate of appropriateness. It's an easy one, it doesn't cost you anything, but you're supposed to do it, at least the way our ordinance is written now. And then finally, it's not really part of the education program, but you know, I have to become a little more structured about a quarterly or semi-annual monitoring visit, complete with maybe photo documentation, just so we can say, yeah, we stopped by there. Everything looks exactly the same. Uh, this is what I did when I was working for the land trust. We had to monitor our conservation easements every year to make sure that somebody hadn't, you know, ripped down a wetland or put in a fence through, um, you know, the, the prairie or whatever. Um, so this is my thought. I'm bringing it here for your guys' um, you know, throw some stones at it, offer some suggestions, say it's fabulous. Um, just interested in what you think. Well, first, I would say thank you for bringing this up. Um, it's a problem that you know everybody with that has any kind of landmarking program has, and nobody deals with it really well. Um, and I'm thinking about this from a PACA perspective again too. We have several properties between the two twin cities here that are uh, easement properties, and we don't have a regular monitor monitoring process like what you're talking about. Um, and it's a really good idea. So. Uh, David. Oh, David. oh, Trent, no, you were, you were going to go. Okay. Um, in, instead of um, orienting it, that reminder to, or the thank you to the holidays, um, perhaps we could time it relative to historic preservation month or week. Good or, idea. Or mm -hmm. festival. And then I also wonder if it might be timed in such a way that it came before that. So it's also serving as a kind of reminder of the upcoming event in which people might participate with their own properties or by circulating. I like that idea because we're already always getting or 
the time that people normally get nice cards in the mail is around the holidays and this does not have to be tied to that at all it's brilliant to have it tied to historic preservation month yep. or prior to that especially mm -hmm. if we have a slate of our own events or other people's events that are already being put on that we can advertise to them. So thank you for that. Trent. Well, I, I uh, applaud you, Marcus, for taking the initiative to think about all this and uh, come up with a plan for, you know, quarterly or however often inspections and and keeping track of who the owners are and all that stuff. It all takes time, and if if you can find it, I think that's those are wonderful ideas, and I applaud you for thank uh, you for doing for coming up with the amount of effort it took to even put together your uh, written proposals and things. Okay. So, Marcus, is there still an annual report that's required for certified local governments? There is, and I think typically Terry does it, as far as I understand. I'm not sure what it amounts to more than um, statistics or something. certifying the meetings that we held, because I know that's one of the big things for CLG status is we're required, HPC is required to meet a minimum of four times a year. I don't know besides that and submitting the report what else is required. Honestly. Haven't we shown like, here's our new uh, designations in the last year or whatever yeah. the period is. And, so. and maybe if we did something for preservation, you know, activities or something we actually did, I think. I will check into that and um, find out what needs to be done and what it needs to because in the past, I've seen some of those. It'd be like a three-page thing with some pictures and yeah. uh, kind of a little uh, retrospective of what we've accomplished, if anything. Mm. But we used to get, you know, grants and things on a pretty regular basis, you know, and, and we already had the data together because we did these annual report things. So I don't think they'd be complicated. Renee? I don't know why that why I'm on right now. <laughs> oh, not really, I wasn't really saying anything. All right, we can find your, um, you can mute down. I might, have, I might have leaned on a button or something. I'm trying to figure it out. You know. Um, I'm wondering if since we always have monitoring of historic properties on our agendas when we have meetings, if maybe we as commissioners could take on some of the responsibility of checking out the landmark properties when we are out and about town so that staff doesn't have to take that on by themselves. I mean, just looking at the West Main Street um, historic district, you know, could take quite a bit of time for one staff person just to go through that area. I'm just wondering if maybe we could, you know, split up monitoring all of the historic properties over a year um, so that staff doesn't have to take that on themselves. It's a good idea. Well, I would be, if anybody wants to raise their hand and say they're interested in doing that, we could work on that outside of HPC meetings. Um, or if you don't wanna raise your hand now, you can drop me a line at any point in time and I can, you know, put together a little monitoring task force or SWAT team or whatever you would like to call yourselves. Mm. I'll raise my hand since I brought it up. Just, Thank you. Just don't, do that anyway, head, so. don't let it go to your head like the Bobby Brady episode in the Brady Bunch, the hall monitoring thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I will get you a sash though. That's I spy. I spy. Yeah, actually, okay. I had wondered about um, on the north side of the West Main Street Historic District, there's a big new development that I haven't been by in a while, but 
Um, you know, we, we probably should have been monitoring the rear facades of those north side properties in, in all the construction stuff that's been going on. Well, and I did notice that they pulled up the brick street. They pulled up all the bricks on Clark. I checked into that um, with Public Works last summer when you had first mentioned that. And those were taken up um, for utility work there. They are being stockpiled and they are planning on replacing them all when construction is complete. Replacing cool. them with, with the same bricks or? Yes, yes. And so they're kind of, they're brick piling them on site so that they'll put them back in place. Um, I don't think they numbered them, so it's not going to be archaeologically <laughs> correct. But. And they could turn them over like sometimes they've done. They start mm -hmm. with nicer tops on them that haven't been weathered if it, <laughs> that's never been done before. Uh, any other thoughts? I have a question. Yes, Kim. I lost video halfway through. Did, oh. I, did I do something that was- I don't was, know, Jason, our host, Jason. It was when Marcus was speaking, I lost so, all, of the, all of the pictures of everybody. Oh. So you probably lost all the pictures, but Marcus yeah. shared his screen. So you would have seen- No, I didn't see a screen. I was looking at it on my phone that he sent earlier, but I, I lost it. I, I I don't know if I did something or if it's my computer. I don't think so. Is it back now? Do you see? Yeah, it's back now. I can see everybody now. Yeah. Huh. Just technology. Hmm. I don't know. I didn't have that problem. Okay. Yeah, I didn't either. It be my computer, oh. internet, whatever it is. Um, any other thoughts about notification of historic district designations, historic landmarks designations? So if anybody comes up with more brilliant ideas, please make sure Marcus gets those along the way here. And before any, you know, postcards or letters or brochures get sent, they'll be reviewed by city staff and at least Alice as HPC chair. Um, if she deems necessary to run it through HPC, I'd be glad to do that. Yeah, um, should. I've got a question. So yeah. at Bill's house is on uh, Elm Street. Yeah. And uh, was that one that uh, backs lease? Yep. And sold. Did that sell? I knew they sold some property. And how they about sold the them all? That one, that one uh, on the corner by the Canaan Baptist Church. That's the old mayor's house. What's the name of that one? Oh, Halberstadt. Halberstadt. And has that's been sold also? The Baxley sold all of their round table properties, and they all actually have JSM management signs on them now, which I don't know if that's appropriate or not. Uh, I, mm. it may not be. But. Okay, so that kind of brings up a whole um, can of worms about new ownership—not just new ownership, yeah. but also new management needs. Yeah. To be yeah, I wasn't sure, Gina, that they sold absolutely all of them. I thought. Really? I think so. Uh, their son Ben lives next door. Oh yeah. So uh, I'm pretty sure they sold all the round table properties anyway. So Halberstadt, I think they sold all the Elm, Elm Street properties. Um, so yeah, I think it was all of them. Yeah, I, well, I'm glad that came up too because Halberstadt House is really fabulous and it's been a local landmark for a good while too, so. Right. Yep. All right, anything else before we wrap up? Welcome, Kat. <laughs> Thank you. Kat, you keep switching between. <laughs> Kat, it, the expert on the Twin Cities. Um, all right, any announcements? Yes, Marcus. Okay, two announcements I have. Um, 
CLG grants were just announced today um, as being available. There is a 3070 match requirement. I think that might include um, in-kind work. I'm not sure I've got to check into it. Applications are due February 15th. If anyone would like to propose a project they would like to work on, please contact me as soon as possible. Um, or if you have a project that you think should be done, but you can't work on it yourself, please let me know and I'll see what we can do. Uh, the second um, announcement is, I believe Historic Preservation Month will be May again. <laughs> Does anybody want to volunteer for working on an event or project, either in person or virtual, or just a project that would become a resource um, that people can do on their own, please contact me. I won't belabor that anymore here. All right, if I don't contact you, remind me to contact you because I have a student project that I never did anything with that we could do something with. Thank you. And we did it kind of tailored toward um, highlighting the Main Street properties, the commercial properties on Main Street in the historic district. Um, and uh, regarding the brochures that you mentioned in conjunction with the no better notification of property owners, mm -hmm. is, is there anything we need a grant for in that process? Quite possibly. I mean, if we, especially if we don't have a good brochure right now and we can spend yeah. five grand into making a good brochure, I think that would be a really good um, expenditure, whether yeah. it's staff time, printing, et cetera. Okay. Yeah, we haven't had a brochure in you know at least 10 years or more. And you know, people keep on telling me nobody uses paper brochures anymore, but yeah. you know, <laughs> for mailing, for uh, dropping in people's doors for putting out at, at conferences. I think a trifold brochure is still an excellent thing. Yeah. Plus, even if you don't print it, the content of it can be a PDF on the website mm -hmm. that somebody can put on their phone or whatever and do a tour. Yep. Trent, did you have a question or? Yeah, when we when you mentioned. Uh the Main Street commercial buildings that are landmarks. What, was that last year or even the year before when there was something going on with, was it going to be a, a- It is, it's a historic a, district. The national? Yeah. Yes. That happened. Yeah, and we just never did really celebrate it. I think it was around the COVID time. Yes. You know, and, and and we talked about it. We had all kinds of neat ideas and stuff, and then it just kind of fell by the wayside. So yeah, I remember we talked about it, and then I can't remember where where it all went. Okay. So Jason, that Jason, do you have your hand up? So that's National Register, right? It is. Yeah. Yeah. So so property owners along that stretch of Main Street would be eligible for the um, twenty percent tax credit if they did an approved project. So that's kind of what got the nomination started for us is that somebody somebody wanted to take the tax credit along Main Street. Any other thoughts? Everybody's asleep, I think. Um, all right, well, if not, do we have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Thank you, David. Do we have a second? Trent, was that a second? Yep. Second. Okay, we're adjourned. Happy New Year. Stay healthy. Yes, you guys we too. Are adjourned yeah. at 8, 10 p.m. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Stay safe. Take care. Yep. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Later. Bye. Welcome again, Bye. Kat. Thank you. Are you, right. you. you full-time in Urbana? Yes, oh. we're full-time now. Planner one. I wish we'd put something in the, maybe we could still do that. Something in the minutes, thanking Dave Seiler for his years of service. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I started to say that at the beginning. And I thought, no, that's better at the end. But can you stick it in there anyway, um, Marcus? Just Yes, okay. yes. And I believe we are still recording. So if you wanted to uh, do something now, you could.
Well, let's say that, um, all right, so it's 811 and we're still open as a meeting. And we want to thank Dave Seiler for his years of uh, contributions to the commission and using his uh, professional knowledge of carpentry and um, how buildings are put together. Um, that was in you, well, between Dave, Dave and Kim, the architects had things covered. Um, and uh, for his continuing to put plaques on landmark buildings for us. Yay. Mm. Hey, Trent, do you want to add anything? Trent? Just thank you, Dave. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Now it's 8 11 still, and we're going to adjourn. So thanks, guys.